Once again, we welcome the English congregation for this English worship service. We thank God and we praise God for His faithfulness, for He has enabled us to enter into a new month, month of September. We thank God for His protection and provision throughout the month of August. And I pray that God would bless us through this month and enable us to glorify His name. In this moment, we'll read a scripture portion and begin the service with a word of prayer. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you dance. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and enter His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, His truth endures to all generations. Shall we all look to the Lord in prayer? Eternal God, loving and living Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this day and for this time. Lord, we thank you for your protection throughout the past month. Thank you for enabling us to witness this month. Oh Lord, thank you for the way you have been working in our lives. At this moment, oh Lord, we look to you. And Lord, we want you to take the preeminence in this worship service. Bless each and every aspect of this service. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted. Lord, we commit ourselves into your care, into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, our English choir will lead us in singing. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm to the fiercest proud and strong. What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone, who took on flesh Fullness of God in help this babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ, I live. There in the ground, His body lay. Light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave He rose. Again, and as he stands in victory, since God has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hands Till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ, I'll stand Till He returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand At this time, Pastor Vidya Sagar will minister us in the Word. Greetings to you all in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank God and praise God for the blessed opportunity that God has 
given each and every one of us uh, even this Sunday to meditate upon his word and to learn from his word and as we are uh, as we have celebrated teachers day uh, on September 5th that is Saturday I just want to wish all the teachers uh, in South Carolina Bad Teachers a happy teachers day and also all the parents also as you are the teachers of your children at home and uh, um, so for this Sunday meditation, uh, I just want to speak on a topic called the misuse of the grace of God. The misuse of the grace of God. Shall we pray? Our gracious God, most loving Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the blessed opportunity that you have given to us as to meditate your word, as to learn from it and to live by it also. Lord, we are unworthy and you are worthy. You made us worthy and through your grace you have saved us and through your grace Lord you are sustaining us Lord help us to understand the heights of grace that you have poured upon each and every one of our lives Lord, Lord as we dedicate this time to you Lord Lord would you speak to each and every one of us so that we may be strengthened in our faith and we may take strength to move forward in every situation of our life. As I submit all of us once again into your mighty care, I pray and ask all these things in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, it's a great privilege uh, that God has given to every one of us uh, to meditate His word, uh, even this Sunday also. Uh, and uh, it is uh, in, the, in the early 1960s, a man named Dhirubai. He was working. He was working in a, 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 in a gas station in Yemen. And uh, after some after some years, he came back to or uh, in the same uh, the same year he came back to India and started an import and export business. And uh, uh, he is importing spices and he is taking uh, polyester or polyester. Uh, uh, as an export from Yemen and this is a small business and uh, that is a very humble beginning where the, their office consisted of only one table and three chairs very humble start and uh, uh, he has a very great vision in his heart uh, to expand his, uh, expand his uh, business uh, to so many other countries also and we understand uh, during, uh, during his lifetime during his lifetime, he established established a industry called Reliance Industries. Formerly, it was Reliance uh, Corporation, RCC, uh, what we call is Reliance Commercial Corporation, that is started in the 1960s. And as and he uh, he is blessed with two children, uh, two two sons, and uh, he they are Mukesh and Anil. And as you uh, as you go into the uh, life of uh, Dhirubhai. And as he is uh, coming to the close of his life, he is he is left with left with 25.6 million uh, billion dollars uh, net worth, and this is uh, this is this is the total treasure uh, that Anil and Mukesh have, and uh, uh, after after the death of uh, Dio Bayambani, and uh, when you try to uh, understand the beginnings and uh, how how his corporations or how his Reliance Industries grew uh, after the death, after his death, we uh, we uh, we understand that they uh, the two of his sons they uh, they divided the treasures or they divided uh, all the money uh, or the or the companies uh, companies uh, half and uh, Mukesh as you as you all know Mukesh and how he has grown how he has utilized utilized his. Uh, 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 his father's his father's business as a platform and how he reached millions of people and uh, we also see on the other hand on the other hand Anil and we also know how as for now as for now how he uh, really misused misused what his father has given him and uh, as of now as of now Mukesh is uh, Mukesh grew from riches to rags from riches to rags and uh, 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 we, we do not know how they uh, how they uh, develop their business in the future, but as of now, as of now, Mukesh 
has utilized utilized what his father has given him and he has been a blessing to so many people or so many countries in the world and uh, Anil and he did not utilize what his father has given in a proper manner and he he went to law uh, went to so many losses in his life and uh, as you look in the Bible also there are certain things uh, that you and I need to understand that Jesus Christ Jesus Christ also blessed every believer every believer with uh, with heavenly blessings heavenly blessings and uh, the grace of God is one of the uh, one of the greatest gifts that God has given to his man uh, given to mankind and when you try to understand how God has saved us and how God is sustaining us and how God is helping us in our day-to-day -day lives and definitely uh, we will be uh, so much grateful to him so much grateful to him and uh, when you look at the Bible there are so many other people also who after being saved after being after knowing the Lord personally and after tasting the ordinances and the ways of God they turn away from what God wants them to uh, stay there because they, they turn away they misuse the grace of God they misuse the grace of God they misuse the blessings of God in their life and they took grant they took uh, uh, the grace of God and uh, the love of God for granted and they live life that is uh, not honoring God, not honoring God. Or uh, when you look into the uh, uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-four, Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-four, and also Second Kings, chapter eleven and twelve, we uh, we we come across a man called Joash. He's a man called Joash, and he he is the youngest king. He is the youngest king uh, in Israel, in Israel. And when you try to understand his life. Or when you try to understand how God has saved him and how God has spread his life, and we might come to a conclusion that how this person have really misused the grace of God in his life, and we often do that, and uh, are not are not blaming this person, but we often do, and we often really misuse the grace of God in our lives, and we think uh, and we take the blessings of God for granted. And uh, most of the time, we do not uh, respond to the grace of God in our life and to the call of God in our lives. And uh, that we need to understand from the life of Joash. And as you look into chapter 11, 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 to 3, I'll, I just read it there. And when Athalia, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal, meaning all the royal seed. But uh, Jehoshiva, the daughter of King Joram, a sister of Ahaziah took Joash, Joash, the person that we are meditating today, uh, took Joash, the son of Ahmad, and stole him from among the kings uh, which were slain, and they hid him, even uh, and he and even his nurse and the bedchamber of Atalia, so that he was not slain. He was not slain. And uh, when uh, during his time, during his childhood during his childhood and uh, his grandmother Atalia and uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, she is a very nasty lady and when uh, when uh, when she have come to the knowledge that her son is dead her son is dead and uh, she out of greediness of the throne she slew every every male royal male that is in their family but out of grace of God out of the grace of God this person called this person called Joash is spared by the grace of God and God used Jehoiada, Jehoiada and Jehoiada Beish uh, as we read uh, Jehoshiva sorry Je uh, Jehoshiva and uh, God spared the life of, life of Joash and uh, he was there he was there for almost seven years he was there for seven years and uh, uh, Atalia is thinking that everybody is dead now and Atalia ruled the kingdom according to her own wish according to her own wish and when these people these people are very godly people who are uh, Jeho uh, Jehoshiva and Jehoiada. These, they are the priests of the uh, true and the living God. They are the priests of Jehovah. They are the priests of Jehovah. And God out of His grace, God out of His grace, Joash is spared by these two godly people. The godly people. And the first great, and the first thing that we understand, the manner of God's grace in His life. And how out of grace God has saved him. God has spared his life. 
when you look at the chapter uh, chapter uh, uh, second kings chapter 11 one, verse 1 to 3 as we read and uh, at, the, at the age of 7 he became the king of israel the king of israel and when you when you look into uh, chapter 21 uh, sorry verse 21 second second kings chapter 11 verse 21 7 years old was jehoash when he began to reign when he ascended to the throne of judah he was just 7 years old Seven years old boy, and how could he? Uh, how could he do that? Only because of the help of uh, help of uh, Jehoiada, the priest that is really leading people in a godly way. This person is very godly man, and this person has been a blessing, blessing in the life of Jehoiada. In, uh, sorry, in the life of Joash. And uh, when you try to understand, uh, when you try to understand the life of Joash, we see that we see that in. Uh, chapter, uh, chapter 11 verse 17 we read that and Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people between the king also and the people and uh, uh, Jehoiada is a very godly man and he made a covenant with the people you people of Judah or you people of Israel you just need to be the Lord's people and you cannot go and worship other gods and you should not do that you should be the people of God. And this is a stand that Jehoiada has taken in the kingdom where there is complete atrocity, where there is complete, uh, complete uh, everything is against the will of God there. But this person, Jehoiada, stood for God and he made a covenant with the people. And what, you know what? But the people really consented with Jehoiada and they went to the temple of Baal and they killed all the prophets there and they destroyed everything there and they turned now from Baal to Jehovah and under this leadership or under, he, under the guardianship of Jehoiada Joash grew Joash grew and under the guardianship of Jehoiada Joash became the king of Judah the king of Judah what a great blessing in the life of Joash because his family is not a godly family actually. But God has given a nice guardian to him. Nice guardian to him. And he grew under, under, under his shadow. And that we need to understand. And, and so uh, with, all, with all those things in his life. And God has given him a, uh, him a, a great burden in his heart. Burden in the, uh, a burden in the heart of Joash. And that we see in 2 Chronicles chapter 24. 2nd Chronicles chapter 24 verse 4 and it came to pass after this that Joash was minded Joash meaning king Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord and really the burden to do God's work or, or the thought to do God's work for any people for any people even now also definitely if, if, if God does not really encourages in that in that area definitely we will not get such uh, we will not get such burden in our hearts most of the time people are uh, 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 people think that uh, uh, I need to have so many so so much burden for the service of the Lord or for the temple of the Lord and uh, this is the thing that people think but we need to understand it is God who gives the burden and God out of grace has given the burden to Joash the king Joash the king and you know what and he has really uh, done that work and of course it is really uh, uh, it took uh, more than 18 years to complete more than 18 years or uh, to complete uh, to repair the temple of God but finally he has done it and it is out of out of the grace of God out of the grace of God and he was able to do it but you know what he has not used the grace of God in a proper way in his life and he has a privilege of being the youngest king of Israel or sorry youngest king of Judah and he was brought up under a godly guardianship having godly parents is greatest blessing in our life and if there are no parents also having a godly guardians in our life also is a greater blessing and uh, Joash had such blessing in his life but you know what after and when you look into uh, uh, 2nd Chronicles chapter 24 verse 2 and Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest meaning until, uh, until Jehoiada was alive until Jehoiada was alive this person 
really saw the Lord. This person really did what is right in the sight of the Lord. But you know what? After, after Jehoiada was dead, after Jehoiada was dead, and his life is completely collapsed. His life is completely collapsed. And he has done, and he is walking according to his own ways now. Look into 2 Chronicles chapter 24. 24, verse 10, verse 10 also. Uh, sorry, verse 14, verse 14. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money, and I'll just read uh, from, the, uh, from the bottom. And, and they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiada. Jehoiada was an influential, uh, uh, influential person, and he influenced people, and he encouraged people to live about their life. And to and to build the temple and also uh, oh, sorry or uh, to repeat the temple and also and to offer sacrifices offer sacrifices and uh, you know what these people until until Jehoiada was there everything was fine everything was fine and uh, after Jehoiada was dead everything again came back to normal even King Joash has changed even King Joash has changed when you see was 17 was 17 now after the death of Jehoiada came the princess of Judah and made obeisance to the king then the king hearkened unto them after, after Jehoiada was dead after Jehoiada was dead some elders came to him elders came to the king and they, they pretended to really glorify him before him before them but and what all those people have told to Joash he, he, he started to listen to them. Started to listen to them. From his childhood. From his childhood. Jehoiada was preaching. Preaching him. Or making him to look to God in every circumstance of his life. But no sooner Jehoiada was dead. Joash changed his mind. Joash changed his mind. And uh, different, he listened to other ungodly people in his life ungodly people in Israel. And, uh, and the result you see was 18. And they left the house of the Lord, God of the fathers, and served groups and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for, for this they trespass. Meaning, they, leave, they left the house of God. They have repaired the house of God until now. And they started and reinstituted the sacrifices and daily sacrifices and everything was fine until now. But as, uh, as long as this person is living, Everything was fine. But when Jehoiada was dead, these people took advantage of the, of the king, of the king. And, and they really uh, increased the king uh, uh, in a deceitful manner. And led all the people from Jehovah to worshipping Baal. From Jehovah to worshipping Baal. Jehoiada brought from Baal to Jehovah. When Jehoiada was there, people or people came from Worshipping Baal to worshipping Jehovah. But as he is dead now, everything is upside down. Everything is upside down. And that we need to understand. How this person is misusing his power. How Joash is misusing the grace of God in his life. He could have really rebuked the people. No, this is not the will of God. We need to worship Jehovah in our lives. And this is the thing that uh, uh, Joash should have done, should have done. But he hearkened or he listened to other ungodly people in his life, in his life. And also, you know what? He went to a great extent now. In verse 21, we see, and God, his burden was uh, on the on uh, on the son of on the son of Jehoiada the priest, and his name is Zechariah. In verse 20 we see, And the Spirit of God came unto Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper, because ye have forsaken the Lord, and he has also forsaken you. In verse 21, And they conspired against him, and stoned him with stones, at the commandment of the king, in the court of the house of, house of the Lord. And how he is killed? And why Jechariah is killed here? He is killed for speaking for God. He is killed for, for rebuking the people. Rebuking the wrong ways of the people. 
and you know who commanded or who literally killed Zechariah is the king himself. The king himself has killed Zechariah. And, and Joash was not thankful to the father of Jehoiada, Zechariah and he is Jehoiada. Jehoiada has really spared his life, spared the life of Joash and taught him good things in his life. And he has been a good teacher to Joash. But this person was not thankful. But this person really killed his own son, killed the son of Jehoiada, not be thankful in his life. And how he grew to this extent, misusing the grace of God. The power that he has today, the throne that he has today, it is only because of Jehoiada. Only because of Jehoiada. But he forgot what God has done through him in his life. Are we really thankful for godly teachers in our life? Are we really thankful to godly parents in our life? Godly guardians in our life? Are we really misusing? Just like Joash has stayed in his life. Joash was never regenerated on the inside. On the outside, he is just acting ultimate hypocrisy from a king. And we see, after Jehoiada was dead, the real nature of Joash is coming to play. Is coming to play. Are we really dependent on other people for spiritual matters? Are we really looking to other people by the fear of them? Are we really or being hypocrite in the sight of the Lord. Might be Jehoiada could not understand that, but God have understood. God have understood. And he also, the final thing he also, how he misused the grace of God is, as Jehoiada really established the temple, again repaired the temple, and with all the money that people have given, they brought all the vessels into the temple, you know what this person, this king, what he is doing is, when an enemy king, when enemy have come upon him, when enemy has come upon him, and it came to pass in verse 23, chapter 24, Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 23, and it came to pass that the end of the year, that the host of Syria came up against him, against Joash, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people, from among, from among the people and sent, and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus unto the king of Damascus and you know what this person have done he has given in verse 18 we read that and the, uh, sorry in 2nd kings in 2nd kings we read uh, the same thing mm, sorry 2nd kings chapter 12 was 18 2nd kings chapter 12 was 18 and, Je and Jehoi as the king of Judah took all the hallowed things, many precious things, or pure things, that Jehoshaphat and Joram and Ahaziah, his father's king of Judah, and dedicated, uh, uh, dedicated, and his own hallowed things, and all the gold that was found in the treasures of the house of the Lord, and in the king's house, and sent it to Haziel, king of Syria, king of Syria. He even sold the precious things of the temple, misusing, misusing, even, even the property, property of the house of God, of the house of God. He would have given his own, his own world, his own precious things. But he also went to the temple, took everything and presented it to the king of Syria, only to avoid war, only to avoid war. What a disaster in his life. What a disaster. And that is the reason. That is the reason. We see the fall of Jehoiada or fall of Joash. Fall of Joash. And the first thing we saw the manner of God's grace in his life. And how God, how God out of his grace has lifted him up and had given so many privileges in his life. 
we also see, we also saw the misuse of grace of God in his life. And how this person did not understand the grace of God in his life. And how he misused it. And we also now see the menace, the menace of misusing. The manner of grace, God, God's grace and the misuse of God's grace. And the menace of misusing the grace of God in his life. And, and how God has really dealt with this person now. Did he forgive? Or did he embrace him? No. No. You see, ch uh, chapter 24, verse 24. Chapter 24, verse 24. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men. And the Lord delivered a very great host into, the, into their hand. Because they had forsaken the Lord, God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. Think of God acting against his own people. Think of God acting against his own people. Fighting with, those, with his own people. Only because of, because of the sins. Sins of the king and the people. God did not, did not leave Joash. Did not leave Joash. But God acted against him. Fought with him. And God was not on the side of Judah now, but God was on the side of side of Syria. And he fought with his own people. Only because of the sins that these people have committed in their lives. We cannot take God for granted in our lives. God is not there to approve everything that we do in our lives. If we are working against the will of God, if you are working against the ordinances of God, God is not going to spare even you and me. Why? He not even spared his own son. He not even spared his own son. And he has given his son to you and me on the cross of Calvary. He could have saved his own son. He did not spare his son. He did not spare the prophets. He did not spare his own people. He did not spare Joash here. And he is not going to spare us. We need to understand the importance of, importance of, really, uh, the grace of God in our life and living up to the grace that God has given. Living up to the privileges that God has given and having that fear in the hearts of every, every believer and live and live a very godly life. Very godly life. And uh, as we are living, as we are, as we are Christians for so long time and, and that is not the excuse that God will take. And He will judge sin as sin. He is going to judge sin as sin. No matter who have done it. And he is going to judge. He is going to judge. And that we need to take to our heart. Take to heart. And the second thing, and he was deceased in verse 25, in verse 25. And when they were departed from him, for they left him in great diseases. And Joash was deceased. His kingdom is gone. His kingdom is gone. And uh, everything on the properties and, uh, 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 and uh, infrastructure that he has built in his kingdom, everything is gone and his own body is deceased now. Oh, what a great tragedy in his life. How good it would be that this person look up to God in, in crisis. How good it is, uh, how good it would be if this person really, really followed in the footsteps of Jehoiada. But he did not do. And he is reaping now. And he is reaping now. And he was murdered. He was conspired against. And he was murdered. In verse 25 you see that. And his own servants conspired against him. For the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest. And slew him in his bed. And he died. Look at the irony. When he was, when he was young. God spared him from dying. God spared him from being murdered. And the same God, and the same God is allowing him to be murdered now. What has changed? What has changed really? The attitude of Joash. When God has given us certain things in our life, are we really misusing it or using it for the glory of God? Are we really thankful for people in our life? Are we really thankful for God and His grace? 
And are we really living a life that is fitting for a believer? And that we need to understand. Because the same God who spared him, and the same God is allowing him to be killed, to be murdered, to be murdered by his own servants. Own servants. And we also see one more tragedy in his life. Jehoiada was dead and he was buried. Jehoiada was buried uh, in chapter 24, we see. Uh, 24 verse 16. Verse 16. And they buried him in the city of David, Jehoiada. Speaking of Jehoiada. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he has done good in Israel both toward God and toward his house. And we see, we see Joash now. We see Joash now. And in verse 25, chapter 24, verse 25, we see that. And, uh, and they buried him, speaking of Joash the king. And they buried him in the city of David. And they buried him not in the sepulchres of the king. He was buried in the city of David. That's okay. But he was not buried with the kings. What a great dishonor for him. Jehoiada, not being a king, Jehoiada was not a king, but he was a priest. Yet, yet he has that honor to be buried among the kings. And being a king, this person, Joash, as he has done wickedly all his life, all his life. And he has missed, us, missed that honor to be buried among the kings, among the kings. And he was buried in the city of David, that's okay. And but he was not buried with the kings. And his burial was a normal burial. Normal burial. Jews really, Jews really are regarded burial and everything also are very special in their lives. Special in their life. And that, that's the reason we see jo, uh, Joseph. And as he's dead in Egypt, and he uh, he uh, do not want uh, his body to be left in Egypt. But he commanded the people of Israel, while you are going, please take my bones. Take my bones. And we also see that Moses have carried the bones of jo Joseph into the promised land. Into the promised land. And this person here, what a tragedy in his life. What a tragedy in his life. And what we learn from his life now, that God has blessed us with so many blessings in our life. Remember, it is not out of merit. It is not out of our merit. It is not out of the family that we come from. Or it is not out of the social status that we are born into. Not anything. Not anything. But the grace of God. It is by the grace of God that we, we are accepted today. And we are saved today. And it is only by the grace of God we will be sustained. Our lives will be sustained. And our lives will have a greater end. Just beginning is not important. But ending our lives in the grace of God or in the or, or in the in the love of God is definitely most important. Most important. And we we learn that from this person's life. Think about our life and your life. Are we really living up to the grace of God in our lives? God has given so many things out of His grace. Are we thankful to Him? Are we thankful to Him? Are we, are, are we thinking that it is out of my work that I have got? And it is out of my, my, uh, my uh, abilities that I am today. I am here today. Is that our, is that our conclusions in our life? If that be your conclusions, just look into the life of Joash and how he has gone through a disaster in his life. May God help us to be thankful to him in all the ways of God. May God help us to appreciate the grace of God in our life so that we may be accepted no matter where we are, no matter how, how, uh, how we are, how we are. As you look into your life, we also commit once again our lives into God, God's hand. Lord, my life, my life is just only because of your grace. 
we are saved by grace we are sustained by grace and we will be taken home only by grace only by the grace of God only by the grace of God let that sink in into, our, into each of our hearts shall we pray oh grace is God most loving and Father Lord Lord our life is a gift from you the abilities that we have are the things that we experience in our life and everything that we possess in our lives Lord it is out of your grace help us to understand it and help us to be really thankful for you at every stage of our lives Lord if there is any element of disobedience Lord, would you take time to correct it in, our, in each of our lives, Lord. Lord, please, I submit all of us into your mighty care. Lord, it is your grace. And help it, and help us also to understand. And it will be your grace in our life. Whatever, whatever we do, Lord. As I submit all of us once again to your mighty care. Especially the people who are sick in our congregation into your hold, into your hands, Lord. Lord, I submit all, all our circumstances, all our struggles into your mighty care, mighty care so that you will take care of us and help us to live this life for you. As I submit all of us once again into your mighty care, in Jesus, bless the name, I pray. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now may the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us for now and for evermore. Amen.